Well, welcome back, everybody, to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis again, and I appreciate everybody who's been watching our show and streaming into the many sources that we have for Radio Entrepreneurs. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to have to move quickly to get into our next segment. But first of all, I want to thank my producer for my new backgrounds. Uh, our association with the Family Business Association, which I was a co-founder of for the last 12 years. And then finally, we put my consulting firm in the bottom corner of Mage LLC. Most people thought I was just a, a very talentless radio show host, but I'm also a talentless management consultant full time. So uh, trying to be humble with that one. But our next guest, I can't wait. Uh, and, but before that, I will say again, my co-host for this is my one and only Mark Z from Mark Z Legal Staffing. Welcome back, Mark. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here. Thank, great to be on this show and, and, um, and, and with your exciting guests we have. Well, this guest has always been one of my favorites. I think he's been on the show about three, four times. Probably the, the hardest person we know to get hold of uh, for this show. And that's Frank Rudowitz, uh, partner at Bloom Shapiro. And we're going to talk about fraud today. And I think that's a big topic with the, the pandemic, COVID-19. Uh, Welcome back, Frank. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, hi, Mark. Um, Frank, yes, fraud is uh, at the top of the top of the list right now, but usually it is all the time. Uh, one of the things I like to say when uh, uh, I thank all the fraudsters in the world because without them, I'd be unemployed. Well, I understand that, and uh, thank. Yeah, I, I feel <laughs> the same way about businesses. If they were perfect, I would have to be in another profession. Exactly. You know? uh, right. So, Frank, why don't you talk to us a little bit about you know. Uh, what you're seeing, and uh, just to make our entrepreneurs a little bit more aware of what's going on. Well, yeah, there, there's obviously fraud doesn't take a rest, and the people that uh, are doing this and are professional at it uh, do this 24/7. Um, and as uh, things change in the in the world and the environment, uh, they come up with new schemes. Uh, unemployment fraud right now is really high. PPP fraud for some. Um, uh, businesses in uh, getting the loans and not using them appropriately or falsifying documents to get the loans is, is high. Um, but one of the things that I'm seeing and uh, the, ins the title insurance uh, industry is uh, really pushing hard on this is real estate fraud. And in particular, I think it's coming up pr primarily for people with second homes, second or third homes, you know, multiple residences that because everybody's remote, you're not traveling as much. These homes are vacant and we're seeing actual transfers of deed, fraudulent transfers of deeds that individuals don't find out about until oftentimes the second sale. And then it's just, you know, trying to unravel it. Um, how does that happen? Yeah. If you don't mind, I'll tell you a, a current case that I have. Definitely. That it's, uh, my client is in um, Switzerland. Um, they have a home uh, on the shore uh, in uh, another state. And there were some storms that went through back in late July and August. So they had a caretaker go by to check on the property. And as they were checking on the property, they saw some signs of no trespass that weren't there before. And the neighbor came out and says, oh, that house has been sold. My, my uh, relative bought it, we're gonna tear it down. Well, that started a chain of events and come to find out that in February, there was a quit claim deed filed on the property in that town. And as we've unraveled this, what happened was an individual uh, got a signature notarized in another state, uh, New York, and legitimately notarized by a, a notary, uh, paid $100, whatever it was, told the notary it was for a quit claim deed, but they don't review the deeds. They just review the signature and say who it is. They then took this document and all they really wanted was the legitimate notary seal. They took it, cut and pasted it onto a, a quick claim deed in another state, um, changed the name so it looks like the homeowner quick claimed this property to this individual um, uh, uh, for zero, zero money. It was a million dollar property. The individual took that deed, brought it down to the town hall, filed it, and then over the next several months, negotiated a sale with uh, others for cash, no inspections, wasn't on the market. Um, law firms were now brought in, a title search was done, 
uh, title insurance was put on it. So the second sale looks legitimate. Um, and now monies were transferred, monies were wired, and we are trying to unravel it because we do not believe that the individual uh, acted alone. Um, and as we've talked to the you know, title insurance companies, um, they're saying this is much more prevalent now because everything's done remotely. Um, law firms and closings are done remotely. People don't see each other. You, you get some ID and things are done at a much more um, uh, quicker pace. So it, it begs the question of if you have a second home and you haven't been there for a while, it might behoove you to just go online and check the land records just to see, to make sure that you're still the owner. Interesting. Interesting. Frank, do you find that um, this new notarization law is um, affecting um, these type of situations also? So for example, um, a lot of um, law firms are doing the remote authorization, I mean, and notarization, um, and uh, they're not meeting the individuals in person. Do you find that is um, causing some of these issues? It, well, it facilitates some of the issues. I think the notarizations, I, I, we haven't seen a problem with the notarization. For example, on this case that I mentioned to you about, um, we are bringing it to law enforcement. And law enforcement first said, well, the, the fraud occurred in the state where the notary happened. And we had to convince them, says, no, it didn't. That was a legitimate notarization. They notarized that individual signature. It's what they did with it afterwards. So... I haven't heard of anything where the virtual notarizations have become a problem because the notaries and, and the law firms are, are very um, diligent about at least proving that it's Frank Rudowitz that is signing this by requiring identification and requiring that. Um, uh, it, it's the, the, the whole surrounding aspects of it. Interesting. Frank, the other, um, speaking of fraud that's going on now in terms of real estate, we're finding, um, especially being in the employment business, and I am, a lot of um, companies are dealing with, and individuals, um, because it's companies, employees, um, about unemployment fraud. It was a, um, it's going all around the country, and it's um, billions of dollars. Um, I think Washington, D.C. was able to recover money, and I mean, not Washington, D.C., the state of Washington, but Massachusetts is going through some serious issues right now. Oh, absolutely. And, and again, because everyone is remote and companies are legitimately shut down, uh, there are um, uh, both individuals and businesses taking advantage of that by fictitious employees on the payroll that are, are laid off, uh, individuals that are saying they're laid off and applying for um, uh, unemployment compensation. Uh, that then tracks back to the business. Uh, similarly with the PPP loans, uh, Massachusetts had the very first indictment on uh, fraudulent PPP loans where it was a fictitious payroll put together or um, an enhanced payroll, if you will, uh, put together to get the loans and then the, the monies are not used back into the business. Um, I think that's gonna be an ongoing um, uh, problem um, uh, for, for a while. I've, I have a new contact of mine that retired out of the uh, Small Business Association, the SBA, as part of their investigative staff, the Inspector General. Um, she's very, very busy right now <laughs> because of uh, 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 her experience and what she used to do and now the fraud that's uh, uh, being perpetuated. You know, uh, Frank, in my work with uh, organizational leaders, they're more uh, tense than they've ever been before. You know, strategies are up in flux every week. Uh, their staff, concern over staff, management of a staff that's remote, uh, the economy where it's going, client stability. Uh, entrepreneurs are on edge worse than ever before. How do they not get overwhelmed by this stuff or ignore this stuff? What's your recommendation to them, the steps they need to take? You know, it's... It, Part of it is very simple. It, it really comes down to um, know who you're dealing with, know your employee, know your partner, know your business partner. Um, because one of the problems that occurs here, especially when there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of other issues going on in a business, you've got a problem, you're going to your trusted person, that trusted employee, that trusted partner, because you want them to take care of it. And over the years, they have taken care of it because they're competent, they're, they're trusted, 
you're not going to turn around and give it to somebody you don't trust. But when a fraud occurs, um, it's always, always somebody that has been trusted because they have weaved themselves into that position. They have put them in that position to take advantage of it. There are some simple steps um, when I say no. Uh, it's not big brother watching. It's do you really know um, what's going on in the life of the person that you're dealing with? Do they have other things, financial difficulties, other issues going on that might be readily available by a Google search, a, a conversation, something like that, so that you can just have the peace of mind um, that this is the person that you need to have dealing with this. Um, I, I think it's an ongoing problem and it's not an easy one to solve because the last thing you wanna do is question your trusted uh, person. Um, but unfortunately, it's just a, uh, a fact of life. Well, since you seem to be harder to get hold of than a white collar criminal, how can we commit to another interview with you? Because we want to keep this topic on the burner with our listeners. Um, I, I would love it if we, if we can um, schedule out. Um, uh, you tell me a time and I will, you know, move things around um, to make sure. This is, I love doing this. You guys are fantastic. And I can talk about uh, fraud and scams. <laughs> the, the, one thing, the one thing that I, I enjoy over the and years. You can bring people with you if you want. If you want to bring some people who have had examples of these things, if you want to do some cases, we're very interested in that. A panel, you bring what you set up what you want, and you can work with our producer, and he's glad to set that up. That's no scam. <laughs> Frank, this is so cool right now. It's such a challenge. A business owner that has been a victim of fraud. Right. No one likes to admit that, but if I can get someone like that to be on the panel and we can talk as an educational piece, I think that would be fantastic. Well, you know, it, it, I understand that last point, and it's a very important point because uh, it's sort of like, you know, other, other crimes that have people have had personally on themselves. They don't like to admit it. It's kind of embarrassing, but I will say it's much more prevalent than people admit. Uh, and you know that, and I know that. So I think bringing it to the forefront would be a good idea. Uh, everybody, we've been speaking with Frank Rudowitz, partner at Bloom Shapiro, with the one and only Mark Z from Mark Z Legal Staffing. Uh, Frank, if somebody wants to get hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, the easiest way is by uh, email or phone. My email is frudowitz, um, typical spelling, right? No, F R U D E W I C Z at bloomshapiro.com. Or my, my office phone is 617-221-1978. I get calls um, at all hours of the, of the day because when something happens, especially a fraud, a theft, that's an emergency to most people, especially a small business. And you want a response. You just want somebody to say, okay, I'm on it. This is what we're going to do. It can wait till morning maybe, but this is what we got going. So right. uh, we do answer the phone. That's good. And Mark Z, how are we going to find you? Well, first of all, I want to say, Jeff, Frank is such a great guest, and what he has to say is so prevalent to businesses and, and, um, and law firms and the whole legal business community. So thank you for being a guest on the show, Frank. I'm Mark Z, M-A-R-C-Z-Legal.com, 617-338-1300. If you forget everything, just Google Mark Z, M-A-R-C, and the letter Z. That's great. Thank you, guys. I, I love that being on here. And I want to tell you, I woke up Saturday morning and I looked at my, my social uh, posts from my friends, and there was a beautiful picture of Mark Z and his wonderful wife that I got to wake up to Saturday morning. And it, it led to. <laughs> you know, well, you went back to sleep. <laughs> well, that, was, uh, that brightened up my morning. So I want to say thank you, Mark, for that, too. Your wife is wonderful. I and mean, we're signing off on that note for Radio Entrepreneurs.